for DHR Health. I'm also the assistant dean for the U University of Houston College of Pharmacy uh, uh, pharmacy program down here in the in the RGV. Uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to kind of structure it for you guys. We're going to do a real quick virtual walk through the pharmacy so you can kind of see the operational side of pharmacy. Uh, you'll get to see a couple of the pharmacists at work. You'll get to see pharmacy technicians at work. Uh, give you some information on some automation that we have in pharmacy. You can kind of see how it looks to be a pharmacist uh, and work in a pharmacy on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and then what we'll do, we'll come out of the pharmacy and take you upstairs to a really quick, brief presentation uh, on the pharmacy careers that we have in place for you guys and what it takes to become uh, a pharmacist in, in terms of pharmacy curriculum uh, and prerequisites and things like that that you have to take uh, to get into pharmacy school. So. Uh, I have the video crew with me, so I'm going to take them through and walk them through the pharmacy real quick uh, and introduce you to our pharmacy world. All right. Okay, sir, before you start, I would like to just welcome everyone for, um, for joining us in this session, and thank you so much for talking to our students here. Um, my name is Cicela Herrera. I'm the specialist here at Region 1, together with PATHS, Pathways Aligned to Health Science, and we are very excited for your session. Uh, we again thank you for joining us and just to tell our viewers there is a little chat uh, box on your right that you can click to ask any questions you would like to ask and also if you are watching live you can join and ask questions um, when needed when uh, I guess when you ask them or prompt them to ask any questions so again thank you we're very excited and let's take it away uh, this is perfect. Thank you guys for having us. And I hope the video does me justice and doesn't add 20 pounds to me. So I hope I still look thin and, and fit and in shape for you guys. So. All right. So the first part of our pharmacy, this is, this is where we enter. And, and the first thing that I want to want to point out is that our pharmacy is, is secured. Uh, we have to have by law, have to have the pharmacy double secured. So there is a, an access point that needs to be uh, accessed in order to, to come into the pharmacy. And there's only uh, certain individuals that are, that are uh, able to access the pharmacy that we give the accessibility to. So uh, everything is handled by, uh, by swipe. Uh, so you swipe into the pharmacy and swipe out uh, to exit. Uh, and there's uh, only specific individuals that are, that are uh, able to, to access it. So, this is our receiving area. This is where we generally will get our, our stock, our inventory that comes in on a daily basis comes in here. We kind of sort it out in this area. Uh, and then we go and we place it into our, our automated machines for inventory control. So uh, this is, normally we get our inventory, I mean our stock about uh, 10 a.m. And uh, they come in huge boxes and we kind of distribute that throughout the pharmacy. Now, the farm, this is one centralized pharmacy that we have at DHR, but we have three locations. So we also have a pharmacy at Women's Hospital, which is across the street. And then we have a behavioral pharmacy uh, over at the uh, Behavioral Center, which is our psych uh, center, uh, where we have pharmacists that are staffing those and they have their own inventory over there as well. So this is the receiving point. Uh, bring over here. If you want to pan out just to the to the pharmacy in general, this is the way the pharmacy looks, and this is just operations for the pharmacy. You can see in the back we have an ivy room that I'll tell you a little bit about. Over to the left, over there at the, at the door, we have our narcotic vault, and you can see that that's accessible as well with a uh, with an access badge only, so that we have all of those uh, uh, physically secured. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of automation over here on the right that really controls all of our inventory. So when you look at it, you don't see very many shelves like you would uh, in a pharmacy that, uh, that you go to, like Walmart, Walgreens, HEB, things like that. Uh, it's fully automated and it allows us to maintain inventory pretty efficiently. So at, a, at any point, we know what our on-hands are, how much inventory we have of a certain product, and whether we'll be needing to order product uh, readily for our, for our patients. So what you see here is, is the, the, the hardware, but you also see a whole bunch of operations happening here with manpower. So over to the right side over here, we have uh, some of our technicians and pharmacy technicians are really, really important to our operations. As you can see, a lot of them are doing their individual uh, uh, activities. Uh, and we'll ask them right now exactly what they're doing so you can see what our pharmacy techs do. 
as you can see, a pharmacy tech here that's loading some product that we're going to take up to the unit that will go specifically to a patient or that will go to an automated machine. Over on that end, in the back, you see the big tall tower that will walk through. You see another technician that's pulling meds. Uh, those are orders that have been processed by the pharmacist uh, through our, through our uh, electronic system. And labels will print out and we will manually dispense those medications that are not located on the unit. 80% of our meds for our patients in the hospital are on the floor. They're readily available by our nurses. And as soon as our pharmacists profile them into the system, they're, they're able to be pulled from our automated device uh, up on the unit. So uh, we, we have to stock those manually. So the pharmacy tech that was over on the right-hand side was probably taking product to that machine to make sure that machine is replenished to be able to have those meds available for them. Uh, and then there's some individual products that we will dispense patient specific, like insulins and things of that sort that go specifically with a patient label that go directly to the patient's room uh, for treatment. So those are being done also and being pulled out of these machines. In the back there through the windows, you see our IV room. And that's a lot of what we handle in the hospital. We, it's not oral medication. We, Although we do handle oral medications, we handle a lot of injectables, a lot of what we call IV medications that go through the, through the vein, okay? And it, back there, you can see that our that our individuals, our technicians again, that are that are pro, uh, producing these activities, uh, are downed up, uh, are certified to, to do the, these particular activities, uh, and by law, these technicians have to get certifications in order to be handling these injectables, and to be able to make sure that they're not contaminated. That's why they're dressed up in in, in garb. So you see that they have a hairnet, they have a, a gown. They'll have gloves when they walk into the IV room. Uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the IV room because there are specifications there uh, with the IV room uh, that eliminates contamination as well for those products. And then again, our narcotic vault back there that has all of our controlled substances. Those are the ones that are determined by law that we have to secure and have addictive potential uh, for patients. Uh, and have a high uh, incidence of diversion, which means that you know somebody can actually steal them, take them, and utilize them and abuse them. So those medications that work therapeutically for our patients for sedation, for pain, uh, because all of those things have to be treated, uh, they have to be secured in the back uh, with a double access point. So we also uh, have certain individuals only that have authorization to go in there uh, and then our machines, I'll show you the machines, also have a an access point where they have to log in to pull those meds out. So they're highly, highly secure. And then over on this left side over here, these are our pharmacists. Uh, and as you can see, one of our pharmacists is on the phone right now. He's probably clarifying an order, a dose, uh, kidney function, uh, things of that sort that we do in order to, uh, to, to adjust the dose therapy appropriately for, for our patients. So you, you see we have three pharmacists that are sitting down right now that are, that are providing those services to our physicians and our nurses. So we're literally verifying the orders that are coming through that are being entered by physicians, making sure that they're appropriate for our patients. Uh, and it takes a lot of work there, believe it or not. There's a lot of brain power that's going on there. There's a lot of thinking that's going on there. There's a lot of verification that's going on there to make sure that the drug therapy is appropriate and we're not, we're not harming our patients. So uh, our system helps us a little bit, and I'll give you a closer up look of that because our system does help us with alerts that provide us dose alerts uh, and, and things that, that will alert us to something being inappropriate in the order. You also see the technicians that are there that are talking to them as well. So there's this dialogue that's going on between the pharmacy technician and the pharmacist for things that have to go out. So sometimes there's errors that we'll make or potential errors that can occur. And uh, some of our technicians are clarifying those things with our pharmacist or getting signatures because before the meds actually leave the pharmacy, they have to be signed by a pharmacist. So any med that's going out, and I'll show you those bins, has to be verified by the pharmacist, not only at the computer, but through a signature, okay? Over here, we have, uh, on this end, we have uh, our director's office, and not only operations, but we do have academics that happens here. So we have uh, three schools that were, are represented uh, for the next six weeks, and we have our Texas A&M College of Pharmacy students that are here with us 
we have some introductory students that are doing an experience uh, during their second year uh, that they come in every Friday and uh, kind of learn the process and learn pharmacy in general. And we give them certain tasks and things like that that they're able to to do on, on the given day to help them learn about patients and how to take care of patients. And then we have another student back there that's a fourth year student and we kind of give them more advanced activities uh, to be able to, to help us and help them learn as well. So you can see that we have students that are physically here learning uh, as pharmacy students. They're already in pharmacy school. I'll, hopefully I'll give the students on uh, in the classrooms information as to how to get to pharmacy school, those that are interested. These are already in pharmacy school and they're doing curriculum with, them, with us. We also have the University of Houston College of Pharmacy students that are here. Uh, and then we have University of Texas uh, at Austin uh, College of Pharmacy students that are with us. I think we have a total of, Selena, we have a total of about eight we have a total of about eight fourth year students, and then we have second year students, probably about another five or six that hit us every Friday, that come in for curriculum. Uh, and our preceptors, uh, we assign them to a specific preceptor, which is a pharmacist that supervises them, uh, so that they can learn throughout their, their time here. So uh, uh, our fourth year is actually doing a rotation with our director of pharmacy, so she's learning economics, uh, management, inventory control, cost, and all of those types of things that come with, with managing a pharmacy. So this is that room. We also have a pharmacist here that helps us with our, with our economic analysis and just kind of our drug inventory. Uh, this is Gabe Garza. And uh, he is one of our, our pharmacists that we just, just came on board probably about September, uh, graduated in May and took his boards and, and is now functioning here with us as a pharmacist and he's doing some economic uh, analysis for us so uh, that's kind of the, the, the general feel of, of, of the way the pharmacist is over here what I have what we have is uh, we have uh, two pharmacy technician supervisors that actually do a lot of our purchasing and our inventory control so they also do quality control for us so anything that needs to be managed from a purchasing standpoint uh, from a audit standpoint that's required by the Texas State Board of Pharmacy they will handle so you can see there's some technicians that are actually working in the pharmacy uh, dispensing meds these are our tech supervisors and our pharmacy tech supervisors that really run everything in terms of our inventory. So uh, that's one there and that's Vettel there that, uh, that really handle everything. And then they also handle scheduling for all of our technicians. So they make sure that our, that our pharmacy is fully staffed with our, with our pharmacy techs uh, and that, way, that we have enough support for our pharmacists uh, on staff. So I'm gonna kind of walk you around a little closer so that you can see the, uh, the automation. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit about what, what happens with that. So uh, up at the top, if you see our screen, uh, by state board and regulations, we have to have certain things monitored uh, and certain medications that go in the refrigerator. So we have an automated system that tells us every refrigerator that we have on site, and there, it's not all internally here. These are refrigerators that are on the unit that are at different pharmacy locations. And it tells us which ones are uh, at appropriate temperatures and which ones are exceeding those ranges. So you can see the red ones uh, are exceeding and we're, we address them uh, pretty readily within a 15 minute uh, time period. And then that escalates if it's not addressed so that we're able to manage uh, those medications appropriately and bring them back for proper storage. So that's a state board uh, regulation. So we obviously have that in place to handle that. Uh, I told you we had three locations. So we have a central location, we have a women's uh, location, pharmacy, and then we have a behavioral location. This connects us to those pharmacies. So this is an, a pneumatic tube system. This is pretty cool. Sometimes we get knuckles shipped back and forth. That should not happen. It should only be for medications. So in these tubes, we'll place medications in wrapped uh, protective uh, packaging and we'll ship it across if they're needing it over there and they don't have it in stock. Uh, that's something that they need timely. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll take inventory over there slowly and make sure that it's there. As a matter of fact, we have a tube coming in now that's delivering back to us. And it may be an empty tube or it may be something that they're wanting to return back to pharmacy from a nursing unit. So these go out to all the nursing units and then go across to the 
So here, as you can see how it came through, uh, this was just a return of the tube so that we're able to use it again. So what we did was we, we sent it out to a, uh, to a nursing unit and then the nursing unit actually shipped it back. Uh, so, uh, and we have a little sign here that says to return it back to pharmacy. So they know uh, that whenever they receive the med, that they readily return it back to us so that we can use it again for the other, for the other. So it goes to all the nursing units at the hospital, makes it really, really quick. Uh, takes away from having to have a technician manually and physically take it up there. Uh, and it's and it's pretty quick. I think it takes about one to two minutes to get to a nursing unit. It takes about two to three minutes to get across to the other side uh, to the pharmacy. Okay, so that's kind of pretty cool equipment. What we do here is, uh, is this is a, like our compounding space. This is where our technicians will come in and replenish kits, okay, in terms of inventory. So they'll replenish all sorts of stuff that, that we have for specific patient population. This is a, uh, a PACU tray. This is a recovery tray. This is for surgery. So this is where our surgeons will come in and pick a, a lot of the meds that they need for their patient. And then they'll return it to us so that we can replenish these medications back in the kits. And the reason we put them in kits is so that they can be readily available to our, to our physicians rather than them having to go and pick uh, through an automated device. It's all consolidated for them. Our technicians kind of do that. We have to manage expiration dates, make sure the product is stored correctly. If it's refrigerated, we got to place it in the refrigerator, uh, et cetera. So uh, a lot of regulation that goes. And then this is our compounding area. This is where we compound like oral solutions, oral suspensions. We don't have any that are being made now, but we compound it here. As you can see, we have our, our sodium chloride. We have our sterile water, our distilled water. Uh, we have our syringes. Uh, for drawing up all of these suspensions. And then we have our labels, kind of just like the way a pharmacy looks at, at ATV, where we label with auxiliary labels. For any of you, you that have uh, gotten sick and gone to a pharmacy and received medication, uh, these are the auxiliary labels that we put on there as alerts and warnings uh, to know exactly what to do with the med. Okay? We have a for the nose, refrigerate, uh, dosage strength, uh, use for oral use only, and other warnings that go on the label. So this is where we do a lot of that. Let me show you a product. This is where we keep them because we store them refrigerated. This is a product that has already been made and compounded. Sometimes we have to crush meds and make them into suspensions. And this is a finished product uh, that we have. And in this case, this is an anti-seizure medication for a pediatric patient. Because a lot of times they can't take capsules and tablets, we have to make them into suspensions for, for our pediatric patients. So this is what we do. All right. And again, with this, expiration dates, who signed it, the technician that made it, the pharmacist that checked it. So there's a lot of verification in place that go into this. Over here, what we have is a, a, a unit dose packaging system. And, and if you can look at one of these in here, uh, I'll have the technician. Put this up. Pull out one of these trays. One of them. Oh, one of our technicians handling it right now. Perfect. So as you can see here, what we do is we get a bulk bottle of medication, and we actually place it in these bins. This one doesn't have one. This one has meds. And what this does is it actually packages these medications into a small little package with individual tablets in it. So instead of us having to do that individually and putting them into a vial. Everything that goes up to a patient is patient specific with one dose in there. Okay, we don't give them multiple doses. We send them one dose at a time uh, so that uh, we, we ensure that we're, we're controlled. So these kind of just fit in here. We put expiration dates on these. We know when these tablets are expiring. It's all controlled by that computer system there. Uh, and then the packaging uh, happens by our, by our machine. And I'll show you what those packages look like. And who's handling this is our technician. So this is our tech. You want to say something? Is, is this pretty easy to use? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, Very right now I'm just um, running our report, which is this. So this is our recycling report. We'll go ahead and scan all the medications to see which is the cancer, which is the NICS. And then once we're done, we'll go ahead and run it and it runs by itself. Awesome. Very good. So again, this is one of our pharmacy techs that's running the operations. And what has to be done is pharmacists come and verify that what they're doing is actually. So uh, 
by state board we need to have applications to these places. So that's kind of that. This is where I told you that our inventory is. So this is where we have our bulk inventory and our package inventory. So if we look at that, we, we saw how our package was uh, is, is a packager. This is what it packages to. So as you can see, they're individual tablets in a single pack that we can just easily tear off. And when we need a dose for a patient with a label, we, we grab one of these and we take it up to the patient. You can see that we're not sending multiple vials or, or vials with multiple meds in it. It's individual meds specific to the patient. And here we, all, we also have additional things. Uh, we have bulk medications. So these we would use to package the pack med. Uh, so that they can package them into smaller packages, but we store them in here before we actually do what we call unit dosing. We have topicals as well. We have creams and uh, all sorts of stuff uh, that we have for our patients. We have commercially available oral suspensions as well. They're in bins. Okay. So if we're wanting to pull something out of here. Let me show you how the tech does. Can you pull something out of here? So she actually put in a medication name into our system and it automatically goes to that med. So if you look at where we're at here, we see that the light is, is fixed on, on the number 71. And then it also gives us a bin location, which is the, the front bin. So this measures the bin location between the front side to the back side. So we know it's in the front side of the bin at 71. So if I were to pull it right here, I would say it's this bin right here, and that's exactly what it's Tylenol. This is acetaminophen. So this is this is automation that we have. All we have to do is plug it into the computer, and it tells us exactly where to go. This rotates to the back. So we have about 2,000 medications, individual medications that are in this machine. And I say in this one, and that one, and that one, and that one, because there's four different machines that we have in order to maintain all our stuff. Okay. All right, so what we have back here is our investigational drug, because we do take part in, in uh, clinical trials and clinical studies, so pharmacists are involved in that. Um, for use, but we're studying it so that it can be approved by the FDA. So there are certain studies that we have in place, and we stock all of those back here, in either in refrigerated, uh, devices or in freezers. Uh, that deep freeze product that needs to be deep frozen uh, for us to be able to manipulate. So as you can see, we have a normal refrigerator back here that has some product in it, 42 degrees. And then we have a deep freezer over here that has it at negative 40. You can imagine how cold that is. So we have to store certain products at different temperatures. Uh, and this is where we generally will only keep some of uh, our study drugs, okay? so. Uh, this is specific to that. Any refrigerated items that are that are for, for inventory and stock for our patients are here in our refrigerator. So as you can see all along here, we have our refrigerators and we have different product, just like we would in the med carousel, uh, that has to be refrigerated. So here we have gabapentin oral solutions, another antipsychotic can be used for uh, for diabetic foot neuropathy as well, uh, like neuropathic pain. But we, we have this here because it has to be refrigerated. If it's not stored correctly, then it goes bad on us and we can't use it correctly. So that's that. So let me show you the IV room that we saw earlier. Again, if you look at the regulations and restrictions, everything I'm able to go in there with my watch, my rings, uh, and I have to be down. So everything has to be pulled off, no cell phones, and we need to use shoe covers before we even step in there. So we have a pharmacist coming out. You can see he has shoe covers on, and he has product uh, that he's putting out from the IV room. So this is our, our, our shoe covers that we put on before we get in there. This is a sticky mat. As you can see, it's, it's kind of, you know, has, has, has some, some dirt on it, but if you can see, 
that's really cool. It's a sticky mat that pulls all the dirt and contamination from up there. And sometimes it sticks to your foot and you can't get it off. But that's kind of what we do. That's the first step in kind of cleaning ourselves because there's a lot of lint that goes on. And then we go in there and we gown. So we can see our technicians here. That's Debbie. Uh, that's Emilio. Uh, they're gowned. They have uh, their hair nets. They have their gown. And then they would put on gloves. You can see the red line in there. Past that red line, on this side of that red line, you can have your your shoe covers only. Past that red line, and, or if you want to gown up and continue to have all your gowning, that's perfectly fine. But beyond that point, you have to be gowned and you have to be gloved and you have to have your mask. And that's just to ensure that from, from that line on, it's cleaner than it is on the site. Okay, and then our rooms actually have ventilation that make them even cleaner. So we have vents that go, as you can see, the, those are called ivy hoods, that silver uh, machine that you see, or, or desk area. And that's where we add mix, because there's flow of air that's going through there that's cleaning all the air out from all the dust so that we don't contaminate it. And all of our technicians, all of those in there are techs. They're the ones that are certified and running the IV room. Pharmacists will go in there just to verify that the drug is accurate, concentrations are accurate, dosing is accurate, uh, and that everything that we that we compounded for them is accurate. So that's kind of the way that works. So you can see in the back we have an IV tech that's currently mixing, uh, and then when they're completed with mixing the product, they'll leave product there uh, on the uh, on the IV hood counter, so that the pharmacist can actually go back there and check. So when the pharmacist goes in there, they have to count as well. Narcotic vault. This is our narcotic room again, uh, double access. This is only access to the bag uh, that we put through here. Okay, outside of that, we wouldn't be able to access it. Okay, the machine that we have, as you can see, uh, we have it all stocked in automated machine that's being pulled out by this computer right here. So this requires an access by the uh, by the user. So a technician that's coming in needs a user ID and, and a password to get into the system to be able to pull anything from here. Okay, so it's locked there and it's locked here. It's not readily accessible, okay? Refrigerated items that are controlled are here and they're handled by that system too. It's a locked refrigerator uh, that can't be opened unless it's accessed through our computer. Then we have warming devices too. Some, some product has to be warm so that it does, uh, does not uh, form like little particles in them. So we have a warming device here for one of the meds that we use is manageable. Uh, so we actually warm the product uh, to be able to utilize it for, uh, for patients and, and add it ready. Uh, one of our pharmacists here uh, that is actually working on uh, some, of our, some of our products that we're gonna be mixing. So we're verifying product, we're uh, producing labels so that our technicians can go back there and mix. Uh, Omar was one that just came out from the IV room. Uh, that actually pulled some products. So what he was doing in there is, as a pharmacist, verifying that everything is accurate on those uh, so that we can get them up to our patients. And a lot of those are, are IV meds that we're taking up for those in our patients. Omar, you want to say anything to these guys? These are uh, high school students. Uh, anything in terms of pharmacy? Why you decided to become a pharmacist? Or uh, why pharmacy for you? Yeah, no, pharmacy is great. It, it gives you uh, access to information to things that not a lot of people know. So I was always interested in my math and science and uh, it just kind of attracted me to the field just because you get to know something that not a lot of people get to know about and you get to help a lot of people right now um, making stuff for babies and the NICU. And it's just very fulfilling and uh, I get a lot of enjoyment in everything I do. Awesome, thank you Omar, appreciate yeah, it. But, no and, and, and things that we do here uh, have single double checks verifications across the board to ensure that everything that's going out is, is safe for our patients. Uh, as you can see, we're taking care of babies that are uh, neonates that are just born all the way up to geriatrics, you know, that are coming in for, for patient care. So we're handling all patient populations. And I'll give you a little bit on just different areas of practice that we have in pharmacy so that you can see where all of our pharmacists are actually specializing in practice. This is our pharmacist area. We have uh, pharmac pharmacists here that I was telling you about that have um, uh, uh, access to all the orders that are coming in, so they're verifying those things and getting them out. 
uh, to our patients and to our technicians to get those served. Uh, outside of that, we have a couple of other pharmacists here that are hey, practicing and working. And uh, yeah, we probably don't want to get the screens with any patient information. That's another thing that's very critical is when we have patient information, it has Our, our pharmacists and our physicians and our nurses. So uh, all of that is has to be kept confidential. So you're not going to get any screenshots of anything, but you can see that our computers are obviously uh, working and our pharmacists are working to verify those orders. And then we have Gabriel and uh, Middle that are busy working on our inventory, making sure that what we have uh, is what we need and what we need, we go and we get and pay for our patients. So. Uh, guys, anything on pharmacy technicians, because a lot of our students right now can actually become, or actually seniors, right? I guess we could actually become uh, yes. uh, pharmacy technicians at the age of 18. So. Yeah. It's an excellent field. Uh, it's grown so much since I've started already about 11 years into the field. Uh, it's when it's going from getting a book and getting a certification now to actually getting in the class, getting in the IV, getting chemo certified. And then now, coupled with what used to be bins on the wall, I remember you mentioned that at the very beginning, we've gone beyond that now. We're doing automation, batch filling, cabinet filling, robot filling. Uh, so the automation, you're IT-centric and you've got the pharmacy skills, you can really mesh those two together. It really becomes completely nice. the IT pharmacy world, especially with Amazon doing a bunch of stuff with pharmacy tech now. Yep. But how much of the, of the operations is truly handled by the pharmacy technician? There's quite a bit that's being done by the tech. Right? Yes, uh, there's a lot, a lot involved. Um, we, like Gabriel mentioned, we are like an automated like, uh, hospital. So we have fixes machines, packnet, med cells, and all of those communicate with each other. Uh, we have, uh, you know, part levels implemented, you know, based on the units and the needs of the unit. So everything communicates with each other and reports automatically come out. Technicians grab the meds and then they take it to the unit. So yeah, there's a lot, you know, pharmacy technicians do a lot, like, right? uh, you know, Play a big role in the pharmacy. Yeah, I can attest to that. Just as a pharmacist, we rely on our pharmacy technicians a lot, and actually, the state board has enhanced their their ability to do more in the pharmacy profession. Uh, we've we've taken them to a level where they can prepare, they can label uh, medications, uh, and really just have the pharmacists come in and verify all of those things. Before they weren't able to do that. Now the ability and and uh, just the knowledge base that they have now allows them to do that for our state board. So we rely on them heavily. And they know because we handle study drugs as well. And I come in here and they prepare most of the of the legwork and I come in, we come in and try to you know uh, finish it off, but really dependent on our pharmacy technicians. So anybody that is interested in pharmacy tech as a first step into the into becoming a pharmacist, I would definitely recommend it. It gives you the exposure. Uh, gives you the, the time and the experience uh, to be able to utilize it. You know, if you're gonna, if you're wanting to become a pharmacist, you can do that now. You know, as a pharmacy tech in training, uh, or go and get certified as a as a pharmacy technician. Yep. All right. So, Gabriel, I just want to since you came out, I'm gonna get you here real quick uh, and ask you what, what, why, why pharmacy? Why, why the choice of pharmacy for you for our students? Yeah. You know, um, I've always had interest in interest in uh, medicine. You know, um, when I was young, you know, taking medicine feel better. I want to understand how that stuff works, and so that's why I went into pharmacy. My interest in medicine. Very much. Thank you, David. Yeah. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, so we're gonna go upstairs, and uh, we're gonna take you through an elevator ride real quick, and uh, I'll give you some information as to. Uh, what you would need to do to get into pharmacy school and uh, you're probably at a point in your career right now in high school uh, and junior high for those eighth graders where you can start thinking you know this is a profession for you uh, and I hope to be doing now uh, as a as a high school student or a junior high student, uh, and uh, what what careers, what specialties we have in our in our profession uh, that actually make our profession pretty fun. Uh,
that's just curve. In the hospital setting, you have the patient directly in front of you, you have your physicians directly in front of you, and you have all of your healthcare team directly in front of you to make those decisions for your patients. So we now work as what we call multidisciplinary teams in the hospital. And the pharmacists you, you see downstairs, some of the pharmacists will actually go up to the floor and make those decisions with physicians. And, and that's what I'm gonna show you through this presentation real quick. Right now, do we have any questions? Are there any questions from anybody? Is currently listening to the live. I know I fly, so I'm going to allow for them. I can. Nothing. Yeah, nothing at this point. But this experience will be shared. Incoming pharmacist, Gigum. Uh, I do have to uh, let me give you a little history as to how I became a pharmacist before I go through here. So, my undergraduate schooling is uh, from Texas AM uh, at College Station. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a diehard Aggie. I'm, a, I'm an Aggie at heart, so I still wear the Aggie lanyard. But my pharmacy school, where I completed my pharmacy curriculum, was at the University of Texas at Austin. So, I'm uh, I'm also a Longhorn. I, I, I have affiliation there with, with UT, but I still claim A&M as, uh, as my allegiance. Now I'm the assistant dean for the University of Houston College of Pharmacy. So when we go around to different high schools, we kind of take this slide deck with us uh, to kind of show the different students the opportunities they have, uh, what it takes to, be, to get into pharmacy school, where they are in the timeline, and then what careers we have that are available for them uh, as, a, as a hospital setting. So I think I think the video is now going to pan into the slides so that I can I can speak to those and we'll go through those pretty quickly. I think we have I'll go I'll try to be as quick as I can so I can leave it uh, for some about five minutes for questions and answer. Okay. So I'm going to ask the classroom right now just to kind of get them involved is uh, who they who they think right now uh, out of this group that they're seeing in the picture uh, is the pharmacist and they can chat it into you or. I'll, I'll probably give it about a minute to see who can tell me who in this picture is the pharmacist. They can just describe the person. Nobody? Any of our, any of our educators can also chime in. The one on the right with the lab coat. So on the right with the lab coat, this one right here, I would, I would assume that's my right, or this one right here, either one of those two, and those are not the pharmacists. So my, my whole thing for this picture when I, when I show it to our, to our students is the fact that we are actually working in a multidisciplinary team. The pharmacist is actually him right here and that to make decisions for our patients. And they're working on the floor. You don't see them in the pharmacy. You can see these sheets that they have in their hands. Those are medications, those are adjustments, those are things that we're needing to make, recommendations that we're needing to make to the team, who is probably this physician here, to make those changes for those patients, okay? But as you can see, the pharmacists are no longer centralized in the pharmacy. They're really located on the floor, taking care of our patients directly. I'm gonna pass through the, uh, the video just because uh, for the sake of time, but it's a video that kind of shows some of our students at work, at work on the floor. And I like to do that for our, for our students in high school when I, when I take, uh, take it to the classroom so that they can see exactly what our curriculum entails. But realistically, our students are on the floor along with, alongside our pharmacists that are on the floor, kind of the way you saw in that picture. So our pharmacy timeline, this is important because 
uh, we want to know exactly where you're at in, in this timeline. And more than likely, you're in this area right here. You're in the high school four years, right? So there's a way to get to pharmacy school, which is all the way over here, but it's a pretty easy trek. You just need to make sure that you, if you're really wanting pharmacy, that you're able to hone in on it right now. So if you're in your high school years, you want to start going through mentoring and personal assistance through anybody that's of advantage of them. We have a mentoring program through the University of Houston College of Pharmacy that we're just starting. And we're mentoring students from STC, UTRGV, and even some of our students that are currently here with us. We're actually mentoring them uh, to get through their pharmacy curriculum, to get there and to get through it. Uh, we, we provide uh, uh, U, U of H and the STC has a cooperative program uh, that, that offers students multiple things, career counseling, and us as well. Uh, we're taking certain cohorts, pre-pharmacy cohorts to mentor. Uh, they have annual meetings, uh, admission to Houston College of Pharmacy. There's meetings that you can attend with us uh, remotely with the university. Uh, and then you can actually have personal visits here where we will mentor you physically uh, and, and try to get you through your, through your high school curriculum and get you prepared uh, for your first two years of prereqs that get you then into pharmacy school. So once you complete high school, the, the pretty easy process. Once you complete high school, you go to your undergraduate career, okay? From your high school program, your first year of college at STC, you can enter this cooperative program, okay? So your first semester at STC, if you go in there and you start taking some of your pre-pharmacy prerequisites, those will will get you, uh, if, if you meet a certain GPA, can get you into this cooperative program where you're already admitted to pharmacy school. And that's in your first uh, curriculum. So get some information on this We see to get you into the U of H uh, program. But if you're not going through the cooperative, you really just need two years of undergraduate work, uh, which really focuses on your chemistries, your maths, your Englishes, uh, all of your sciences. So what you're doing now as a high school student, please focus on that coursework. In addition to what you can do now is get some volunteer work. There's summer volunteer uh, programs that are available. We have a summer volunteer program here that helps give you exposure and experience, bring you into the pharmacy so that you can tack in. And as you're in your undergraduate career, moving down the road in college, uh, you have that experience here that you can put on your resume uh, to shoot over to the pharmacy school for consideration. So volunteer work, community service, all of that type of stuff is really, really important when you're also looking at, uh, at getting into pharmacy. This is our pharmacy team. This is just a group of our pharmacy preceptors. I told you that students are here on site. We have multiple students uh, that are precepted by our, by our preceptors. So uh, this was the pharmacist that was on the unit. We have two other pharmacists that are decentralized on the floor. That's our director of pharmacy, Gabby. Uh, Bridget is another one of my faculty members for the University of Houston College of Pharmacy that is a preceptor for our pediatric rotation. Uh, Karen works in our neuro ICU, uh, works with our neurology patients. Uh, and then I work with, uh, with ID. So I work with infectious disease doctors uh, and I work with the patients uh, in our hospital. And then this is the one that really runs our University of Houston program, which is Selena. Uh, she's here for onboarding and helps all of our students uh, and really helps us coordinate uh, everything that we do for, for our students and, and for you guys, believe it or not. So in a nutshell, I'm gonna go over the different uh, areas of pharmacy. So if you look at careers in pharmacy, you see that we have institutional, which is hospital. We have clinical pharmacists uh, that I just showed you in that other picture. Uh, you can work in retail. You can work at Walgreens, HEB, uh, any of our independent pharmacies. You can work in compounding pharmacies, uh, ambulatory care as well. We have pharmacists that work one-on-one -on -one with patients like, like physicians do to take care of our diabetes patients currently. Uh, and then academia. So let me show you some pictures of those. This, you already know this. You saw the ivy room. That's exactly a picture of our ivy room that we saw earlier. That's one of our technicians mixing. Uh, and this is institutional. This is what we do. I kind of went through the pharmacy uh, in terms of operations. Uh, so our pharmacists, you know, do some clinical work, dispensing, 
Uh, we have some compounding. We have IV room sterile products. Uh, and then we take care of all of this stuff, outpatient narcotics and all of our satellite pharmacies. Clinical pharmacists is the picture that I showed you earlier of our pharmacists up on the unit that actually work in different areas. So you can see that we specialize in areas on the floor uh, dealing with our certain doctors. So this is MICU, Montos is working in, in our medical ICU. We also have infectious disease, transplant, cardiology, pediatrics. So we have pharmacists that are truly specialized in those areas. They go out with these multidisciplinary teams and take care of our patients. This is what you see at HEB, and we take care of insurance issues. Compounding, this is our IV room, and this is your one and only here that was going back there to check one of your meds. So, uh, that IV room is exactly the way that you saw it uh, through the video earlier, okay? So that's, uh, that's our compounding area. Ambulatory and outpatient. This is one of our pharmacists that works in our diabetes center that actually works with our patients directly. She tells them exactly how to take their meds, what to eat, diet, uh, et cetera, to take care of their, of their blood sugars appropriately. These pharmacists, this is Stephanie, one of our pharmacists that specialize, she's a certified diabetes educator, and she actually has a collaborative agreement. So she can actually write a prescription for patients uh, to go and take and fill at, at the pharmacy, just like, uh, just like a physician would. And then academia, as you can see, we have a student here, we have a resident there, and then we have Bridget, who is one of our faculty members, who is here actually teaching our students as they come in for their curriculum. So through the University of Houston, we have to teach. Of our beauty, that's part of our daily activities. So we are physically in our classroom right now, where we are able to teach the students that we have currently on site uh, with the, with uh, with them. Then, in terms of admissions, what you want to do, uh, what is required for pharmacy school? How can counselors and teachers help the students become more competitive? And then, why the University of Houston College of Pharmacy? So the application requirements, you need two to three years of prerequisite coursework. That's the coursework that I told you that you have to take as an undergraduate college student. That's your first two years of, of, uh, of college work. You maintain a certain GPA, you get volunteer experience in the pharmacy, you get some community service under your belt, you do well in your math, science curriculum, and your Englishes, uh, and you meet this prerequisite coursework. Remember that STC has a cooperative program in your first semester of, of college work, uh, coursework, that can actually get you into pharmacy school at that time uh, with the University of Houston, so keep that in mind. You need to get familiar with some of the pharmacists in the community, because you're gonna need letters of recommendation when you apply to pharmacy school. So this is important. You can take advantage of our mentoring program here at, at, at uh, DHR, so that we're able to help you with that and you get familiar with some of our pharmacists here that can help you with letters of recommendation. We also help you with your PCAT test. Before you, as you apply to pharmacy school, you have to take an entrance exam. That's your PCAT exam. We can help you with that. We provide you some information. We provide you some curriculum here during our mentoring program. And we actually buy you a PCAT review to help you get through your PCAT if you're really interested in getting into the pharmacy program. Uh, and then community service. Uh, remember, you gotta do a little bit of that with your church with volunteer groups or things like that, because this is really important. We want to see how empathetic you are to patients and how you help your community. So this is kind of your coursework uh, for prereqs, biology, micro, genetics, chemistry, Uh, also need some psychology, some sociology, uh, and then you know these are your basic course uh, core requirements for your bachelor's degree. Uh, three recommendation again, we talked about that. 
It could be a professor, an employer. We're back. Okay, we're good. So uh, this is your PCAT. I kind of talked about where we where we found your recommendation can help you with the PCAT. Uh, we help you learn math and science at a deeper level so that you're able to to master uh, or do well in your PCAT exam. You do need 25 hours of required community service. So we talked about community service. So Make sure that you plug in some of your hours now as a, as a student uh, so that you're able to complete uh, this requirement. Uh, and then you have a commitment to our community, I think is big. Uh, that's important to our profession. Uh, uh, join a health profession or a science club. If you have them in high school or once you get into your college a uh, couple of years, make sure that you get into uh, healthcare professions organizations. Le learn about the college requirements and we can help you with that. Come in and, and, and meet some of our pharmacists at DHR. That, are, that you know already in the community so that you can utilize them as mentors and uh, for letters of recommendation. You need to be disciplined in your study. Make sure that you that you have good study skills, and then that you visit the different colleges, uh, college campuses, so that you get familiar with your college campuses and know how to attend colleges in the state. Uh, uh, and and that's the one that we promote. But uh, there's multiple. That you, can, that you can actually look at. Uh, uh, board It looks like we lost um, Dr. Ron Galvan, but he will be back. I mean, Dr. Osuna, um, their connection was a little bad there. Oh, I think they're back. Yes. Okay, so... I was saying is uh, we have board exam University of Houston pharmacists who are actually first in the state in 2018. And what I mean by residency is a licensed pharmacist. You can go and become a resident a resident for advanced. Houston has a really good resident placement where they go beyond and and get advanced training. So a lot of diversity there uh, in the in in the valley. We have we're greater than ninety percent Hispanic. Here you will see all, all sorts of culture, uh, and and that intermix uh, is is very very good for education. You get to learn other populations and other uh, get to associate with other colleagues and peers of other cultures. That helps the uh, the education process. Uh, a big medical center. Uh, in Houston uh, that has uh, MD Anderson, Methodist, uh, and multiple large facilities, uh, Baylor, uh, where you can actually learn and take uh, a lot of your coursework. Uh, and then the other one is actually DHR that we're now due to affiliation for those Valley students that want to come back to the Valley. You're able to come back your fourth year and take your final clinical rotations here with us. Uh, and then there's a state of the art building. University of Houston just built this seven floor new pharmacy building. Uh, and it is uh, of, of high quality technology uh, and really, really nice. So I'm, I'm lucky to be part of that uh, uh, new establishment. So 
Uh, these are some other resources if you'd like to, to explore pharmacy a little bit more in terms of career exploration and scholarships that are available uh, for, for any of our high school students that are wanting to go into, into the pharmacy curriculum or ph into pharmacy school and, uh, and need some financial assistance there. So there's some local financial assistance. If you are wanting to take your undergraduate coursework at the University of Houston, there's local scholarships specifically for that uh, that can help you get through your first couple of years of undergraduate work before you get into pharmacy school. And that's really it. That's the pharmacy building. Uh, that is the what it looks like. And uh, over on, yeah, I think it's this side. The entrance is over here on, on, the, on the right side, I believe. Uh, and this is the pharmacy building at the University of Houston College of Pharmacy. So that's where you would physically be taking some of your curriculum. And then we would remote back in and out uh, with any students that needed uh, connection back to the Valley. So that's kind of the way we handled that. So now I know I went a little over, but uh, it's 10.04. I'll leave it up for any questions that anybody might have that's in the live uh, broadcast. I don't think we have any, um, well, we have Ms. Conde. Ms. Conde, uh, is your class watching? Uh, we also have Mr. Valderas, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is being recorded, Dr. Osuna, just so you know, and a lot okay. more students will watch this. Um, whoever was not able to join us at this time, we will create a YouTube link and it will be shared amongst hundreds, hopefully thousands of other students, uh, so they can watch it at, at a later time. But Excellent. we want to take this time, since there's no questions, to thank you again, Dr. Osuna, for this, um, this tour you gave us. It was very, very, very informational and very interesting. And it's, it's cool to see how there is so much security with, with everything you do. Of course, it is medication. So um, I know there your information is going to um, be very interesting for our kids and, and we have, it'll be reached eighth graders all the way through seniors and a lot of them do have opportunities for uh, pharmacy tech. So I'm very happy that you referenced to that so that the kids can ask questions with their counselors and their teachers to get more information on how to, to go through that path. So this is one of our paths and um, I don't know if you have any other Thing to say to our kids? Again, I, I, I thank you for the, um, for the opportunity uh, to, to uh, get some information out to the, to the group in the Rio Grande Valley. Just want everybody to know that, that you know, we have pharmacists here uh, that are readily available and, and excited and, and uh, really want to help our students progress. So any students that are truly interested in the pharmacy profession can, can reach out to us, reach out to our program uh, for the University of Houston, and we can kind of guide them and mentor them through, uh, as, especially if they're, if they're undecided. I know healthcare is a large, large field and pharmacy is just one part. Uh, we, can, we can even help uh, those students that are still undecided uh, and hoping that, that they uh, you know, make their decision down the road. We do have one thing that's coming up uh, in the summer uh, that we have through the University of Houston. So you might want to tell your the students out there, those that are able to, to make it. We haven't nailed down the date, whether it's June or July, but it will happen in the summer, is we have a pharmacy summer camp uh, here on site uh, at the Edinburgh Conference Center, which is right across the hospital. We have that. This will be our second, second year uh, that we have this summer camp, and we invite any high school student any pre-farm student that is thinking of pharmacy school, uh, 
to come and join us and we put them through activities and lectures and information like this to get them one step further uh, in their in their career search so uh, we will probably shoot out an invite once we nail down the date uh, as soon as we possibly can potentially in March to all of our counselors uh, that we have access to uh, but please if, if anybody that we don't reach out to uh, remember that we do have something available so you can contact us directly for any information on that uh, so we'd appreciate it if uh, you all would spread the word on that. We'd love to increase our attendance and touch more students kind of the way we are with uh, with this video. So again, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, and we're here uh, for any other questions that may come up once uh, once the recorded uh, version is uh, is distributed. Thank all you. right. Thank you so much, Dr. Osuna. And we will uh, surely share that information on that upcoming camp. And we will be in touch, uh, Region 1, and, and very proud to have DHR as partners. So we do a lot of work with you guys in many different areas. So uh, again, thank you. And I want to take this time to tell everyone that joined us, thank you again. And we will see you next time for the next Cyber Mentoring Session. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys.